Well, hi there. We're sitting out here this afternoon uh, with the curator here, my dad. And uh, I heard a little thing this morning about some northern lights and a geomagnetic storm coming in. Actually, six of them um, in the last day or so. And uh, I thought uh, that I would get an actual rocket scientist out here to kind of try and, and help explain some of what these northern lights that we stand a very good chance of witnessing tonight, a little after midnight in the northern hemisphere anyway, uh, what's behind that light show? Now the earth uh, has about it these uh, magnetic fields and uh, they're generated from within the earth uh, a lot of people suspect that by uh, convective currents within the planet and then these, these rings of magnetic energy pass through the planet and around it and give us this big geomagnetic uh, magnetosphere uh, for a great distance around our planet. And then when uh, we get solar radiation come in, you know, from space, you know, uh, radiation from space and solar radiation from our nearest star. Um, it protects us from that and the, the magnetic charge uh, works with some of this radiation to keep it off of our planet and away from us. And uh, here to kind of elucidate on that a little bit is uh, Kurt Nelson, our curator and uh, physicist in residence. So Dad, how did I do? <laughs> you did okay. <laughs> uh, the question is, what is a magnetic storm and, and what does it do and how does it get here? Right. If, if you look at the sun, the sun is round and it has a strong magnetic field and, and once in a while it will squeeze the plasma, which is uh, gas with ions in it. It will squeeze it and it will come out uh, of the sun like a, a big gush, like a, like a geyser. Like a geyser. <laughs> and uh, so once in a while it will squeeze, the magnetic field will squeeze it and uh, it will circulate and come out. It's called a solar flare. And it comes out of the sun, and uh, now the sun, sun is round, and it's actually slowly turning. So it's kind of like looking at a water sprinkler. When the water sprinkler goes around, the water comes up and hits you in the face. Well, that's the kind of the model you want to think about. Uh, we're looking at the sun, and the sun is rotating slowly, and the arms of the sun come reaching out. Uh, the 93 million miles or so in a few minutes to hours in time. Now, when you belch out and squeeze the plasma, the solar wind, it's called, uh, is full of ions, and uh, it just kind of stays as a group and goes towards the Earth, and then the Earth kind of uh, gets in the way, and uh, the Earth has a, a built-in magnetic field due to the rotation of currents of ions in the center of the earth and so uh, as they rotate around we have two poles north and south so we're a bipolar or two poles north and south magnetic field which surrounds the earth now the the north and south pole are opposite in in the extent so you got a north pole on one end of the earth and the right straight across is the south pole. And it rotates uh, every 35,000 years or so and flips over a little bit and uh, has problems, but it's pretty stable. Now when the solar wind hits it, the solar wind is ions. Uh, a high density of ions comes towards us and it comes around like a water sprinkler. And it pushes, a, if this is the Earth, the magnetic field surrounds it. And the, the, the front of it, when we're traveling through space, is the solar wind hits it and kind of piles up like water, like a bow wave on a boulder in a creek. 
so you got water coming down here and it builds up the standing wave in front. And then the water goes around the rock, this is a rock, goes around the rock, and then it takes off and makes it long tail. So you have laminar flow behind the rock. So here, here it comes, the water comes down, hits a rock, stands up, sneaks around both sides of the rock, and then it gives up and goes straight. <laughs> and that's called a, a tail. So the geomagnetic field of the Earth uh, is, is affected. When you have a solar wind coming in, it's going to pulse that, push it a little bit, but it, it's not going to get down to the Earth, but a little closer to the Earth. And uh, you have all those ions in there, all those elements, uh, the lower end of the chemical chart, and they start colliding with each other. And when they collide, uh, some of them give off light. Uh, a, a light green glow is one of the most common one. And so you have this big intense beam, like a water sprinkler, going slowly around. It hits a geomagnetic field of the Earth, and the Earth can't, can't take it. It does all right, but uh, things start glowing, and so those are called northern lights, and they reside 30 to 50 miles in the air off the Earth, and they glow. And at what time does that happen? Usually, when the when the Earth rotates around, it's like 10:30 to 12 at night. That's the front end of the Earth going through, and that's the best time to see them. Uh, the the sheets. The sheets of ionization caused by collisions of the ions uh, glows like a light frequency we can see with our eyes. And uh, sometimes we'll have a, a, an M arc called a mid-latitude arc, which is red. It, it's more rare, but uh, they seem to dance. Well, the reason is they dance in big sheets in the sky, and people look at them and say, oh, northern lights. And they're not stationary. They kind of dance around in sheets, like drapes or curtains. So and, they uh, kind of move along with the undulations of the magnetic field? Well, uh, they move around with the collisions and, and the different densities. You don't have a constant density when you have a solar flare. It's a variable density, like a flame of a match. Right. And it varies. So uh, what caused the the solar flare at the squeezing of the magnetic field on the surface of the sun, it pushes out a big pulse of ionized gas called high density solar wind. It travels to 93 million miles, comes to the earth, hits the front of the earth, and if it's really intense, it goes lower in elevation, which means you see them lower in the sky. And if it's light, It'll be up in the air a little bit and less intense. Uh, you can see them down as far as Mexico City on a real big one. Uh, you can see them in the north uh, Canadian border uh, about 3% of the time. So it's not real common. So what they do is they announce it on the radio and make everybody excited. You know, oh my golly, we got a, guess what? We got a, a storm coming in a day, one day, because the, the sun has to rotate around like a sprinkler and then face shit it so you can see it. And uh, they're not very predictable whether they're intense or weak or whether they dance in sheets or whatever. So they say there's going to be a storm, you better look at it and see what it looks like. And uh, if you get in the northern latitude, like Alaska or Iceland, Greenland, uh, the northern lights are quite common, like all the time, not all the time, but most of the time. And down here at the mid-latitudes, about 45 degrees, uh, you're going to see it less. And you get down to Mexico, uh, you're going to see it less and less than less. <laughs> Uh, you're not going to see them from the South Pole. Now, the South Pole has, has northern lights, but they're not north, they're south. No, they're so the they're Aurora Australis, right? Southern, uh, southern lights. 
So they, they have a they have a comparable situation down there, but we don't get much advertisement about them up here. They could happen at the same time, and concurrently, on the earth if the storm is real large, and you want to wait your time. But uh, they most people enjoy it. Uh, they seem to think they're magic, but actually it's not magic. It's just collisions of ions, uh, which produces light. Because uh, the energy is proportional to the frequency of the light given off. And uh, if you have a high energy, you have higher frequencies, which is green. And if you have real low energy, is red. Because uh, red is a longer wavelength. Hmm. And if you have a longer wavelength, you, you can calculate what the frequency might be. So you can kind of decide who you're going to get, red or green. But most of them are light green, dance around, give a nice display. They don't make noise. Uh, some of the people up north claimed that they crackled and sparkled and discharged in the northern polar regions. Uh, they do sing. They do make noise and they discharge but that's way up north in the la higher latitudes right and that would be the, the uh, lower um, altitude reaction yeah. stuff yeah. right so the geomagnetic field of the earth is caused by the magnetic currents in the center of the earth luckily we have that geomagnetic field because it protects us from high intensity radiation from the sun and we can count our blessing that we're alive because of that geomagnetic field. If you go to the moon, there isn't any geomagnetic field. If you look at other planets, there, there's no big magnetic field on them. So in the early exploration, we were always looking for planets that would have a high magnetic field that would have a chance of living on it. But, uh, yeah, without being ravaged by solar we're, radiation, yeah. We're, we've been kind of singled out to have a, a pretty nice magnetic field to go with, go with us. And it's here all the time. You just disturb it once in a while, called a solar, solar flare from the sun, and uh, you get a visual display in the sky. All right. Well, hey, thank you, Dad. That was illuminating. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, so I'll get some pictures of these northern lights tonight, I hope. And uh, now we know a little bit more about why they're out there. Well, this is Hippie Dave and the Curator wishing you all a really good day. Peace. <laughs>